Let us start with the presentation. So, the format is going to be I will call out some names. So, you can upload your uh, presentation on the laptop here. So, he has made a particular directory I think. Uh, yes. So, let us uh, request Kumara can you make the first presentation. Yeah. Uh, this is a study of predator prey model uh, which is a well known model in the ecology and one of the uh, basic models used in the uh, I mean in, in this field. So, so basically uh, the scenario is in a meadow there are these uh, rabbits and wolves and uh, wolves are predator, predators and rabbits are prey, uh, prey and uh, uh, I mean the idea is to understand will the size of the predator and prey matter or we know that wolves eat rabbits and will will the population of prey would come uh, in this case rabbits would it would it extinct or would it uh, survive. So, that is the idea. So, some of the assumptions that I am making that uh, rabbits can uh, I mean rabbits can survive uh, rabbits eat uh, vegetables around and uh, can survive, uh, but if rabbits are not there, wolves the only food source for the wolves is rabbit. So, if rabbits are not there, uh, wolf, uh, wolves can survive. So, that is where the uh, model that shows here is that suppose in this case Y stands for the wolves and X stands for the rabbits, assuming that uh, wolves are not there, which means Y equals to 0. So, the uh, I mean. Okay. Uh, then the population size of uh, rabbits keep growing exponentially uh, because I made an assumption. Uh, but there is a, I mean, the, the the later ecology models have evolved. Uh, I mean, to uh, I mean, this is very idealistic model. So there have been modifications done to that. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. This is a mistake here. It should be y. Uh, it's a typo in here. Now. Uh, so, I mean in the case of rabbits not being there, x equals to 0. So, it should be y here, it is a, it's a typo. So, the population of wolves decreases exponentially because of this negative term here. That is why this is considered negative. Now, the other question is what does these terms stand for and how do they relate? Uh, now, x y uh, stands for the interaction whenever these two in encounter. So, uh, so yeah, for every encounter of them, then this this in uh, indicates the rate at which uh, you know the wolves are going to die. For example, p and q, the size of p and q. Suppose instead of rabbits, if I uh, if I consider cows, okay. In that in that case, wolves uh, one cow would be enough for. I mean, uh, I mean. One cow, one cow would be enough for more than two or three wolves. I mean, so that kind of a relation. Uh, in the case of rabbits, each wolf need more than you know two or three rabbits for uh, for its meal. So that that that's what this indicates. So that's what basically those constants indicate. And yeah, so with with some arbitrary coefficients, I have uh, plotted the phase plot. Now. Uh, one one equilibrium would be zero comma zero, and the other would be sixty comma forty. And the rest, if we look at, uh, they are like an unstable cycle. So, for any infinitesimal population, uh, the I mean, for a while there would be increase in the population of predators, and then once the predator population increases, then the prey population goes down. So that continues. So there would there wouldn't be extinction of any of the uh, I mean either predator or prey uh, except when I mean only one particular population was there. So, that that was the meaning of it and this was for a different. So, if we look at in one case the uh, you know I mean the if we look at the. So, this looks like a elongated along uh, dilated along x axis. So, it it. So, this is because of the p and q that I chose in one case I chose p to be larger and in the other case I chose uh, q to be la uh, larger. So, that is what this indicates. And uh, there was now 
uh, as I mentioned initially, the uh, the very I mean ideal ideal I mean the assumption that I made in the first model is in the absence of uh, predators, prey's grow I mean exponentially. But that's too uh, too idealistic thing. That would never be so. So, but we know that there is this pop, uh, uh, for population uh, logistic growth model that when incorporated, then that would give you a much more realistic picture of it. So th that's what this indicates. And we, here we'll have another equilibrium point stating that the carrying capacity of the uh, ecology system decides where it should come. So that 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 only up till that point only. Okay. So, are there any questions? <laughs> uh, okay. A MATLAB only I have made. But yes, I mean, we can prove that thing using Lyapunov function as well. If we go calculate the, okay, there, if I go with a linearized, if I linearize the system and then calculate uh, the coordinate at first equilibrium point 0, 0, then my eigenvalues would be. Uh, one would be positive and the other would be negative. So then I would be essentially, uh, and in the other case, eigenvalues would be imaginary. I mean, I have gone through that, but I did not put that all in. And then what would happen is we would not be able to conclude anything. So we will have to choose a Lyapunov function and, and thus, uh, you know, go about that. So next Thanks. I'll request uh, Akash Gotmari, Got right? Yeah. Good evening. My name is Akash. And my topic is nonlinear dynamical system hot air balloon. As we see, uh, the figure shows the basic principle how exactly the hot air balloon works. Uh, here is the burner uh, which heats the uh, atmospheric air. As we know, uh, if you heat the air, it changes its density. As we increase the temperature, uh, density of the air get reduced. So, relatively the light higher uh, the, the air which has a higher density, uh, the air which has a lower density, uh, it, uh, it always at the top of the air. So, by, by, by virtue of burnt force, uh, it the whole system lifts. The, at the top portion, there is a parachute wall. Suppose if we uh, if want to reduce the height, uh, it just uh, if it is. Uh, If uh, if you if you by operating the parachute wall, the uh, parachute, uh, the hot air balloon can be uh, uh, its height can be reduced. This is basic about hot air balloon. It has a burner which heats the air inside the envelope. Uh, the, the the casing was called as envelope, which is actually a, a fabric balloon which uh, holds the air. The basket which in which the passenger and the pilot stands. Uh, this is the working. Uh, the gas basically uses the propane gas which mixes with the air to produce a flame, and that flame hits the air inside the balloon, which decreases the density of the air. So, by virtue of beyond force, uh, the whole entire uh, physical system lifts. Objective, a uh, basic objective is uh, how can we control the height? Means at what height we have to uh, reach that the balloon. Uh, here, uh, the input is the rate of heat supply means how much of heat you supply. Output is the height. Uh, w, w A are the densities uh, of the air. W A is for the ambient and W is how it uh, changes with the temperature. T and T are the temperature of air in the balloon and the atmosphere. Uh, tau is tau cons thermal time constant. Uh, so, you have three states temperature height and velocity rate of height change okay. these are the state equation uh, the first one is the how temperature is varied and the second is uh, so these are the state equations and the third one is the the force uh, uh, the for how the force act on the uh, entire system So minus g is gravity, which pulls pull it down to downwards. So Q is affecting only equation one. Ah, okay. So as we see the equation, uh, it is a nonlinear system. Uh, the the state equation x three equals one by x one. So 
uh, for linearizing that system of uh, finding the equilibrium point by putting all the state parameters equal to 0. So, these are the equilibrium points x3 is equal to 0, x2 is some constant height and x1 as a temperature equilibrium temperature. So, this is the matrix which is a uh, matrix A uh, which is a after finding the Jacobian at the equilibrium point. So, as we get the matrix A, uh, after that I found, it, found the equilibrium uh, eigenvalues of it. Uh, for that, uh, the eigenvalues are here 0, minus 1 beta, and minus u by w. So, as we, as we know, the tau mu and w are always positive. So, eigenvalues are negative, hence the system is stable. So, conclusion uh, what has not been modeled? Uh, in this model, uh, I just uh, while mo while modeling the system, I only considered the heat supply. But uh, here, the uh, you can change the system by using that parachute wall also. I mean, suppose if you want to uh, increase the height uh, by applying a, but giving heat, you can raise the balloon to a certain height. But if you want to lower the height, you have to remove that air. So, therefore, that the parachute wall is there so that it ex removes the heat from uh, removes the air from the balloon. So, for while modeling, I just considered uh, heat supply. So, I think we will stop here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Are there any questions? So, we will ask uh, Richa Singh to make the next presentation. All right, you can start. Yeah, My topic start. is a, a dynamic model of hexacopter. Uh, in this, uh, we are going to means uh, I want, means if, whenever there are six propellers in the hexacopters. So what if one propeller uh, get damage without any fault detection? Means which propeller get damage? Uh, whenever it is in action, whenever rotor is in action. So, if some propeller get damaged without means without knowing that which propeller is get damaged. So, earlier it was a, it was done by time varying means uh, time varying problem. So, first uh, what we will do, we will do some disturbance rejection then simulation then reallocation of the problem. But what in this, uh, in this we are doing uh, one uh, additive ASDB, uh, additive state decomposition based dynamic inversion stabilization control. This is a highly nonlinear system, highly nonlinear system that is in by using this we do not need to reallocate again the again the model. So, the objective is to ex, uh, estimate the uncertainties or disturbance online like without stopping the model when it is in the air itself then we can without stopping the model itself we can solve the problem uh, without even stopping that. So, this uh, ASDB dynamic inversion stabilized control it is used to uh, means uh, it, it does not any uh, it does not time varying because when we are doing time varying we have to stop that system first and then reallocate the different seats so that two of the rotor we can stop means uh, in pair we can stop the rotor and we can do with four rotors. We can make it act like a quadcopter, but by using this uh, control system uh, with six with six rotor itself we can uh, continue the process of uh, whatever we are going to use for that hexacopter. So, uh, these are the uh, inertial frame and the body frame. We, uh, I show you and this are the differ differential equations used in that ok, where x l n are the moments of that and uh, these are well known phi theta angle, phi theta psi angle, yaw angle since uh, translation and in rotor model translation and uh, uh, rotational they act to, together 
we can't go simply like translation separately and uh, if we are we are moving forward we have to pitch down and then only we can move forward and this, so translation and rotational motions are co paired so this is the state space model for this now this is for uh, when one rotor uh, when when one propeller get damage uh, in this uh, the torque of that uh, that portion that rotor on that rotor the torque will be less so lift will be on that becomes zero because it is not providing lift the main control unit for the hexacopter is the rotational uh, i mean uh, rotational velocity of each propeller by uh, when the each uh, propeller having u uh, like uh, like omega u so it will hover at one point but what if uh, one u is got uh, one u is equals to zero so there are only five u so it comes down uh, it will come down one sided and it will not perform the function so this is uh, in by the, using the asdb model what it do it uh, reallocate the function it reallocate the equations mm, uh, it means it uh, it is inside i don't know what is it inside the uh, asdb mm -hmm. model so uh, um, this is only my thing and uh, what i want to say if we are using pd controller we can control it there itself but if two propeller damage we can't use again pd controller so asdb is the best thing we can use i don't know the state space for that uh, asdb model and i didn't get the specification for that so this is it and it can be also be done by pid controller but it will become more complicated if we are doing pid model so what would the main advantage of this over a quadcopter be uh, this quadcopter in quadcopter we can't take more uh, payload and all that if we need uh, some but capacity here, but here you are adding more things you had yeah we are more. adding more things but uh, in quadcopter it is a uh, simple but the payload capacity for the quadcopter is less uh, than hex hexcopter so we are using hexacopter so we could have increased the fan power yeah but fan power we can increase but what if one one side is uh, get damaged its altitude get uh, means uh, you, you, altitude will not be remain the same means uh, asdb is uh, like that without stopping that portion like if it is it gone for some surveillance procedure so if what if one propeller get damaged so it will we have to bring it back and then reallocate all the position means it was earlier it was used as time varying system like mean, time varying problem so maybe we will stop here we will not so we will ask uh, kedar joshi to make the next presentation uh, so uh, i am going to talk on uh, control of uh, electrostatic uh, micro actuators uh, so uh, first of all uh, the uh, electrostatic so uh, as we know that uh, electrostatic force has uh, one over r square dependence so uh, it it the size and the as uh, as it decreases as uh, one by r, uh, one over r square uh, the uh, and because of the low aspect ratio in in the case of uh, my, at micro scale it becomes very uh, handy to control the system with using electrostatic force so uh, so the common techniques that are uh, employed uh, in the case of uh, uh, to uh, control mems devices are uh, of three kinds uh, state actuation comb drive and uh, micro resonators so uh, this uh, so actually uh, this is in the in the case of state actuation what happens is uh, <coughs> the plate uh, the actuator actually moves in the direction of electric field and in the comb drive uh, uh, potential is applied across those plates and there is uh, lateral movement of the plate so uh, and the main thing in the comb drive case is that uh, the force doesn't change with uh, the distance so and the third one is uh, the uh, micro resonators uh, in which uh, uh, these are commonly used for uh, processing electrical signals like uh, you first uh, uh, make uh, make a resonator and then again take the signal so that you get a particular frequency so the problem statement that uh, i am trying to deal with is uh, millipede memory so a millipede memory it is a computer non volatile computer memory storage based on nano scale uh, bits that are uh, 
that are uh, done on that are burnt on the surface of the polymer. So, actually uh, here there are heaters on the cantilever bar uh, and uh, these make indentations on the polymer surface and these uh, things which you notice here are uh, representations of bits. Uh, so, uh, naturally in this case uh, they have this is a design by IBM this is a design by IBM research lab. So, they have proposed rates of around uh, uh, gigabytes uh, per second and uh, uh, very high uh, uh, <coughs> bit storage density of around uh, terabits per inch square. So, uh, naturally at these high rates the control aspect of this cantilever becomes a very important uh, aspect and hence we, uh, we will require a dynamical point of view to study this. So, just to represent the uh, scale down model of the system of uh, one, uh, one uh, array. So, here we have is uh, a plate, this is actually the tip of the uh, cantilever and vo uh, voltage difference is uh, like potential difference is applied between the base and this. Uh, so, the, all the, uh, the spring constant and B can be defined. Uh, so, and eta is the distance between the two plates. So, the systems non-linear uh, non analysis. So, the objective there would be to keep eta, uh, I mean if you see the schematic can you, uh, yeah. So, what, what would the objective here be, the control objective? Uh, so, like as I, to, uh, as I told, uh, to read and write the memory uh, or uh, erase. So, we have to, uh, uh, so there are heaters on the uh, right. cantilever. So, in order to write it you have to uh, actuate it till the point and till it till it in, uh, makes an indentation and then again lift it. So, that is a write, uh, write operation and read operation would be uh, similar like recording what the moment it has made. So, in a read operation you do not actually touch you come close enough is yeah, that yeah. what a read operation? Yeah, read operation actually no uh, you make contact of the tip with the surface so that it gets burnt and there it makes an indentation. Okay. So, control, uh, so it has to be displaced by some, by some angle, it has to be displaced by some angle. So, the control of that becomes a limiting factor in this. So, uh, if, uh, if eta is a displacement uh, from the equilibrium position, uh, this is what we get uh, after solving, where u is the applied potential difference between the plates. So, uh, we so do, do have a PD, partial differential equation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not actually partial differential. Okay, yeah. because you have written partial. Uh, is eta a function of the spatial coordinate as well? No. No, no. No, this is just, just the a, ordinary yeah. differential. So, a linear a linearization around uh, uh, the equilibrium point gives uh, this equation. Uh, if we like, and uh, the uh, point here I want to make is that it has. Uh, it has many equilibrium points like uh, whenever whenever I want to place it at some uh, some uh, angle or some position, I will have to change the potential difference in such a way. So, if we if we look at one such uh, equilibrium point, this is the equation what you get, where uh, k, uh, the k is this thing and beta is, beta is this. So, you can see that both depend on the applied potential difference. And this potential difference varies if we want to change the location of the equilibrium. So, the state uh, state space model from that equation converts to uh, this uh, thing and here as you can see the control variable is uh, the potential and so u naught must be applied to maintain capacitor split at a distance of eta naught. So, uh, and what we have made assumption is that uh, the actual the displacement of the actuator uh, is uh, is very small. So, that approximation has been done here in order to get this. Yeah, so, the uh, so equilibrium conditions uh, if we look at equilibrium conditions uh, solving the potential energy uh, minimization we get that uh, the plates can be operated only uh, one third the distance from the its rest position. So, and uh, the, the other uh, control factors that uh, uh, matter here are like uh, we have not considered the uh, fringe effects that would be that would make the system actually uh, non-linear, highly non-linear. 
and uh, here the main uh, the uh, the control law that they used was a switching based control scheme because we have multiple equilibrium points at and at each equilibrium point the pid con if we if we uh, look at uh, pid control law for this particular uh, state space uh, here k k and b depend on uh, the, uh, positions so we will have to switch from uh, one pid control law to another pid control law at every at ev every point so the switching based uh, model is was used here yeah so for this stability uh, suppose uh, you if you look at uh, the potential uh, at equilibrium so uh, suppose i say x star is my equilibrium uh, and uh, x not is the actual distance so uh, v square varies as that and you want for stable condition that that equation must be satisfied so to operate in stable zone uh, it should be only one third the distance from upper plate. So, we will we'll take other yeah. questions later. So, uh, we will have a uh, person with a pink shirt, what is your name? Tushar, yeah. Hello everyone, my topic is nonlinear analysis of quadruple tag. In this, we have to control the level of two lower tank, tank 1 and tank 2. This system is MIMO system. In this case, there is a water in this tank. We have to control the level of water in tank 1 and tank 2. Uh, there is a control valve. See, uh, here, uh, there are two pumps, uh, pump 1 and pump 2, through which we are uh, forcing that gra uh, lower tank water to this upper 4 tank. Uh, this tank are uh, coupled, uh, cross coupled means uh, water coming from lower tank is going to tank 1 and tank 4 and water coming from lower tank uh, is going to tank 2 and tank 3. Our objective is to control the level in water uh, tank 1 and tank 2. So, the portion of water which are coming from lower tank uh, uh, going to tank 1 is, uh, uh, is scaled by gamma 1 and the portion which are remaining portion which are going to tank 4 is scaled by 1 minus gamma 1 and the portion portion of water which are coming to tank 2 is scaled by gamma 2 and remaining portion is scaled by 1 minus gamma 2. Here uh, there was two input u1 and u2 that pump voltage and output are to the height of uh, water level in lower tanks. These are the dynamical equation of that tank. In, uh, in that we are just considered the basic principle the ma mass flow rate balance equation uh, to construct this uh, four equation uh, and this is a nonlinear non equation as one can see uh, uh, square root comes in uh, one of the state variable. Uh, after linearization we will uh, we got the this state space model. And from this state space model, uh, we I can uh, we can conclude that uh, all the states are uh, all st all the eigen value of the above systems are on uh, left half of S plane. So one can conclude that the above system is. So is it true for all Ti? The statement you make the eigen values. So for it's. Uh, not all ti the point where we have linearized that model that is true. We have uh, Misha Gupta. Uh, hello everyone, my topic is uh, visual homing from scale with an uncalibrated omnidirectional camera. So, uh, the problem involved in this uh, that it is not linear system, the dynamics involved are due to the camera images which are taken at different places. Uh, so, uh, I will cover the introduction, the problem statement and the image, uh, this, uh, uh, this has been taken from uh, one of the paper, the image with visual surveying, its state space model and stability analysis and corresponding to that, its control law. So, uh, uh, what is visual homing? Visual homing, it is that uh, it utilizes pair of uh, images taken at the reference and the current position to uh, guide the robot. 
So uh, different environment have different images. So uh, those images are taken as in terms of like uh, pixel uh, values whose pixel coordinates are uh, converted correspondingly uh, uh, to the xy coordinate. So, uh, uh, this system is uh, uh, less uh, sensitive to error accumulation and it has been applied uh, mostly in the uh, area of industrial robots. So, it is uh, uh, the uh, this is the pro problem statement that uh, uh, we need to uh, from uh, we have we need to guide the robot from C to O where C is the current robot position and these are P1, P2, P3 are all the points. Uh, uh, taken from the images at the starting and at the end position. So, uh, these are uh, taken from the image uh, feature point, uh, image uh, pixels. So, uh, these may vary uh, corresponding to uh, different environment uh, changes. So, uh, uh, it, uh, so, while modeling the system, it has been assumed that uh, uh, camera can uh, convert uh, these image coordinates easily to corresponding angles. And, uh, uh, and the objective is to drive an error uh, between the observed and desired features to 0. So, uh, 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 the matrix is the system matrix it is like uh, E dot uh, that is uh, to um, minimize the error possibility to 0 from initial position to the final position. So, so that is like a linear uh, system? E no, no, it is uh, not. Okay. Oh, it is L. I have just okay. L. The matrix right. I have uh, okay. defined. So, it will be stable uh, if uh, uh, if we take the inverse of the matrix that will be some pseudo inverse. So, for uh, it should be full rank for uh, uh, asymptotically uh, stable system. So, these are uh, various uh, definitions uh, used these s beta these are scale features of that the pixel coordinates and the angles corresponding from initial to uh, final <coughs> position. So, uh, the equation uh, are uh, uh, derivatives of uh, scale features, bearings and the uh, length of uh, each feature from the starting and end position. So, the uh, final po uh, from calculating it has been uh, got that uh, the final points are equilibrium points where, where the robot has to reach that is SI star, uh, beta I star and LI star. Uh, so, the states uh, are uh, so, to guide the robot. Uh, so, that is like an equilibrium for the system where it has to reach that point. There, yes, that is the equilibrium. So, we need to now check that that equilibrium is stable or not and uh, to reach that robot we will uh, apply the control input accordingly. So, the uh, uh, states uh, for uh, to move the robot from one position to another we need uh, just uh, 3 pixel co uh, three uh, coordinates of any features of the image taken. So, that is why. Uh, the state space model consists of position of the robot x, y, theta, the feature points uh, s1, s2, s3 and the angle of the robots. So, the as this is the nonlinear equation, so x dot uh, this matrix will be uh, the bigger one 9 cross uh, 9 matrix. Uh, so, uh, as this is the nonlinear model, so uh, we need the stability analysis. So, uh, taken the energy function which satisfied all conditions like it should be positive uh, uh, it should be positive uh, definite and uh, v dot is uh, less than equal to 0. So, if uh, we prove that then uh, uh, it then uh, we can say that at that point convergence is uh, achieved and that point is the stable. So, taking the energy function in terms of scale features means uh, taking all scale features uh, half of this square. So, calculating this this whole term is positive. So, d by dt is negative. So, the equilibrium point is stable and the convergence uh, to that uh, final home position can be achieved. Uh, so, corresponding so, so to. So, even though you have less than equal to 0, you actually converge to the point. Yeah, yeah and that has been showed from the simulation results. So, uh, uh, con uh, control algorithm according to that can be designed because uh, Lyapunov function uh, stability has been analyzed. So, you have one and a half minutes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, scale based control uh, is uh, something like V x V y are the control input. So, it can be in terms of that scale feature and beta and because it satisfied that Lyapunov convergence condition. So, this can be achieved. So, uh, this is the block diagram that how image is taken and uh, that robot motion can be controlled uh, to the final point because it is stable and the simulations uh, results uh, showed the trajectory that uh, trajectory of that uh, that uh, because of uh, convert uh, we can show that with various methods it is converging to the final position. 
and uh, the uh, exponential uh, decoupled decrease of aramines uh, it is uh, reaching to that uh, steady state. So, this has been showed at the graph. So, the conclusion is that uh, necessary stability is uh, achieved and this type of method, this type of system analysis can be used for any kind of robots even it can be applied to uh, 3D space for unmanned aerial vehicles and uh, this uh, and this approach is uh, stable and uh, from simulation it has been proved that it offers better performance uh, corresponding to the dynamic objects. Thank you. Nepunagarwa. Okay, uh, the reason I have taken this topic is uh, because first thing it is a simple model. Secondly, like sir said that uh, it is it was supposed to be you know something that will people will relate to and something that is interesting. I am sure you will relate to at least some part of it. Okay, so I will just jump into the, uh, it was actually the simple I will just jump into it directly. The first the simplest model of this, this is not the simplest model, there was a simpler model. It was first developed in 1994 by a maths professor to teach these uh, these uh, face portraits and all these things to its students. So, the same same thing here just to get a different flavor and to see face portraits and the time response in a different light. Okay. Now, consider a simple Romeo Juliet love affair. Now, R is defined is what we are going to call is Romeo's love for Juliet. Okay. Now, if the quantity R is positive, it is love. If the quantity R is negative, it is hate. Similarly, for Juliet, it is the same thing. Juliet's love for Romeo at time t. Again, positive love, negative hate. Now, A and B are what are called as Romeo's and C and D, Juliet's romantic style. Now, what that means is, now, Romeo's love will change with respect to time. Now, this change will depend on two things. First thing is own feelings for Juliet. And secondly, Juliet's feelings for him. Okay, so these two things matter. Okay, it cannot simply depend on his own feelings for Juliet. That will kind of be uh, incomplete because he has to see what kind of response he is getting from Juliet. So that's okay. how the rate at which yes. Romeo's love grows yeah. depends grows, on grows or decreases. Okay. That depends upon that. Okay. okay. So now this is a simple this is a simple linear system. Now what after this what I have done is I have plotted a few face portraits for different values of A, B, C, D. And we just go into interpret so that. So I'm just curious: was the original model proposed a linear system itself? Yes, yes. The original was proposed as a linear system. It didn't have the second term. It didn't have the second term. So the original model said it just the change in feeling just depended on his own feeling. Okay. They didn't consider the other partner. Which is unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. E even this is kind of unrealistic. It's pretty complex. Yeah. I mean, so there are so many things <laughs> <laughs> that uh, we have to consider. Now, the yeah, the only thing that you have to remember now is. For these values, positive values is love and negative values is hate. So I will be using love and like interchangeably, but do not do that in real life, you will be doomed. Okay. So, now what we have this is, now the parameters A and B, like we have this over here. Okay. So, we have certain terms which, I mean, basically what they have done is the students of this professor, they have clubbed all these kind of, uh, or broadly all the people into these four categories. Now, the first one is where A and B are 0. Now, they will call that person as an eager beaver. That is, uh, even, I mean, his feelings amplify not only with his own feeling, but even if he gets a little hint from the other person, this guy, you know, he goes on top of the moon. So, that is what eager beaver is like. Then we have a narcissistic nerd. Now, uh, what this basically means is, he, he, he mostly takes into consideration his own feelings. Okay. So, uh, what they have put it as, this guy likes to be, uh, likes to love, but he hates to be loved. Okay. So, if the other person shows some feeling, this guy goes into a shell, but if he has his own feelings, they build up on it. Then we, what we have is a cautious or a secure lover. Now, the, uh, this guy tries to keep his own feelings in a shell, but if he sees that the other person is responding, then his love will increase. So, this is, uh, this broadly classifies most of the people. And the last one is a hermit. No matter what, this guy is always in a retreat mode and he is basically a very shy person. Yes. Is <laughs> <laughs> B is less than 0, that implies he is interpreting it in the negative of whatever it is. Yeah, in the sense, if he if he's, he is kind of scared. Like if he sees that the other person is responding, he kind of gets scared and he retreats. Whereas if he sees that his own love is there, then he is fine with it. 
Okay, now here what we have is both A, B, C, D, all these terms are positive. Like both of them are eager beavers. So with time, their love increases. And uh, yeah, another thing. Now the before I go ahead. Now for this system, the equilibrium point is zero zero. Now what zero zero uh, implies is the love for both is zero. That means they have neutral feelings for each other. Now this is what you don't want. So this is a system where you don't want it to be in equilibrium. You want it to be unstable. Because if you think equilibrium means they have no feelings for each other and there is no relationship. Okay, so here we want the the system to be unstable towards positive infinity because that is love. Negative infinity, it's again hate. No point in the relationship. So here, the first system, all these parameters are positive. Over time, the feelings are going to positive infinity. All is well. The relationship is of all love. This is a love-hate relationship. Uh, it oscillates between love and hate. All right. Now the thing is, now the only thing is, it is unstable. It either goes to positive infinity or negative infinity. It doesn't converge to zero. So we will still have a relationship at the end, at time as time tends to infinity. Whether it will be a purely love relationship or hate relationship, that will depend whether it goes to positive infinity or negative infinity. This is what you call a fizzle. As you can see, it oscillates and then it converges to zero. That means you have a love hate relationship and slowly it just dies down and you have no feelings for each other again and it's a breakup. This is a purely hate relationship. It starts, it, it actually starts close to zero, but then as time progresses, the hate increases and it just chaktis ka akra, as you call it in English. Yeah, I, I forgot Hindi, to so see it, those titles yeah. because I was looking at the So <laughs> that is how it goes. It's a purely hate relationship. Uh, this is a will she, won't she relationship. It is a non decaying sinusoidal in mathematical terms. Okay, so it, it, just, it just oscillates about the equilibrium point. And uh, it's the relationship continues till time, but it's a uh, hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. It doesn't decay or it doesn't do anything. Now, in over, in all these conditions, we started with the initial conditions where both the both the both Romeo and Juliet like each other. Now, this is a condition where the girl does not know that the boy exists. So we start with the zero uh, with where the girl does not know the boy exists. So what can happen here is the boy might continue liking her. But the girl, she initially develops some feelings, but then go to zero. So that is the case which happens with, I guess, most of us. So, so maybe, this that, that maybe we are almost yes, sir, just one more side and it's done. Okay, but all is not lost. You still have hope. If you can change your parameters a little, this can still blossom into a love. So it all depends on how you model your parameters. And just the nonlinear effect that was a linear model. You can have saturation. Love cannot go to infinity apparently. And uh, if you have an overbearing or an obsessive partner, the more the person starts liking you, you start liking the person less. Okay, so all these non-linearities, they can be modeled in this kind of a model. And since this is a simplified model, you can have other effects, whereas the appeal of other individuals, what the other person is trying to co convince you or to see you, interaction with the environment and all those things. Thank you. Okay. So thank you. And uh, so now... Uh, can we have Ashwin Khatke? Are you ready? This is my topic. So, epidemic propagation. Uh, so, there are many models for characterizing how diseases or viruses propagate. So, these are used in analyzing uh, epidemic outbreaks or even virus outbreaks in, com in terms of in case of computer networks. So, these are pretty generic and can be used in so mod so this is a very uh, one of the most simplest models that exists but it's still a non linear one so there are some of the so we divide the entire population into three categories one is susceptible the other is infectious and the third is recovered or dead i mean both are so we basically assume that once you are recovered you can't get infected again and once you are dead nobody cares if you are infected again so uh, so the assumptions are that the total population remains constant. Uh, population is uniformly stirred so that the rate of infection and recovery is uniform across demographics and uniform across geometry. So we are not considering um, how people are located or anything. And yeah, the once the person infected either recovers and becomes immune or dies. And incubation period is negligible. So this turns out to be a autonomous system in that case. 
so we the rate of uh, getting so the rate of decay of susceptible people is some constant times the number of susceptible people and the number of infected people so the more the both the more the interaction and r is your contact rate so, so rate of increase of the infect so the rate of change of the infectious people is again the rate at which your susceptibles decay and the rate at which people get recover so and similarly the so this as you can see the sum is zero so as we know that we, as we have taken in with the assumption that the total population remains constant so it's consistent with that so we start with <coughs> start by assuming that you have no recovered or either everybody is either susceptible or infectious so let me explain so, so initially uh, so there are two conditions that you can see one is that if your number of susceptible people are greater than a by r or less than so a is basically your rate of recovery and r is your contact rate so if you are initially your susceptible people are more than uh, your co contact rate by sorry uh, recovery rate by contact rate you have kind of an increase in the infectious kind which you can see by the rate for the recovery in this case so you initially witness an increase in the infection and then it slowly decays if you have this number of susceptible people less than a certain threshold value you kind of always have the infectious kind decay so now in this case there is kind of so in your sir plane you have uh, sir space you have a complete plane which is an equilibrium plane initially if you have no infection you will have no infection nothing changes so and it is unstable so as even if you put up a little bit you recover so your automatic glow go from susceptible to the recovery zone so this is an unstable uh, thing so my so some if you consider that your recoverable people can again be infected so you can kind of like reduce the problem to s and i so you can you get a sim, uh, simple two dimensional system and you see that it can be stable or unstable depending on what your contact rates and your recovery rates are so these are the two situations based on your relative recovery and contact rates based on that your equilibrium may change so this is uh, another model used for some different diseases so this is actually used for gonorrhea so they actually divide the population into two classes so that only one infects the other and the other infects this and there can't be mutual infection i mean one group can't infect themselves and the other group can't infect themselves you just uh, have the same kind of same uh, so the variables are similar you have two sets of susceptibles two sets of infectious and this way so if you look at this system the logic behind the equilibrium uh, i mean the dynamical equation so dynamical system formulation is similar to the that in the so in this case you observe that there are two equilibrium points one uh, interesting observation in this case is that the system is positively invariant for the i positive i1 i2 quadrant which is what we are dealing with anyway I mean, if you have more so this can be seen from the differential equations as well like if you have i1 zero your uh, rate is kind of positive and for a positive i2 so as long as you get so, so if you have a zero i1 sorry you have a positive uh, rate of change of infectious so you again get in the infectious zone similarly if you have a positive if you have a zero i2 you again get in the positive so you are always getting pushed into the same zone you can't escape the boundary so this is one so you have two equilibrium points in this case one is the obvious zero 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 is and the other one is unstable because you move away from the equilibrium as we just saw uh, the other point is this this is called an endemic equilibrium point which uh, arises in case of so this arises only if you have if only if this satisfies so how what do you make of this so n1 is your total population of the first kind n2 is your total population of the second kind r1 is the contact rate so n1 r1 is kind of the number of may one so let's call males and females so because it's a gonorrhea model so you have number of males that come in contact with the female and 1 over a2 is the average time that one female takes to infect another one so that is kind of like 
number of infections per female so, in you have half a minute yes sir so this is the same analogy for the other half if that is greater than one so at least one of them infects the other you have a uh, situation in which you get an equilibrium case so by linearizing that system you can show actually show that this point is in fact a saddle point and it has uh, or stable or unstable depending on which of these parameters which of these ratios is greater than one or less than one thank you yogra singh right yes. hello everyone uh, so uh, my presentation is based on uh, stability of rocket in vertical flight so uh, we don't want our rocket to uh, fall off uh, during take off or uh, in uh, our ascent mission so we want our rocket to uh, move uh, in a desired trajectory so uh, i modeled uh, rocket with a uh, inverted pendulum model uh, with assumption uh, that uh, there is no uh, aerodynamic drag and uh, thrust uh, thrust is only acting for providing uh, the balance to uh, fall off yeah so um, this is a, a, a non linear model and uh, my uh, in this case state variables are p where p is the distance from reference axis of base and theta is a, a pitch angle and p dot and theta dot are the rate of change of uh, uh, distance of base and uh, pitch angle so after linearization uh, we found, found that uh, uh, um, state space representation of uh, our uh, model and here mu uh, mu are the uh, viscous uh, coefficient yeah so uh, if we uh, analyze model uh, uh, if we uh, neglect the uh, position control then uh, we uh, found the face uh, portrait of uh, that uh, uh, model uh, is uh, like this uh, and uh, here we can see that uh, 8.0 uh it is a uh, point zero is the equilibrium point but uh, it is not a uh, stable equilibrium and uh, another two points uh, minus pi and plus pi comma zero are uh, equilibrium point but uh, these are asym asymptotically stable points uh, but if you want to uh, control our model then we have to uh, uh, give input uh, by uh, uh, thrusters at base position so uh, this model was very simple so uh, if we want to go model completely then we have to consider uh, wind disturbance aerodynamic and propulsion force and also if uh, uh, our rocket is flying uh, uh, greater than uh, like supersonic speed then there will be mark number uh, uh, effect of mark number on our flight characteristic and uh, to uh, achieve uh, do you have for the problem that you are considering i don't yeah. think you need to worry about those things right? yeah, if, wind disturbance i can yeah. see but you don't have too much aero but if if we want to uh, stabilize in flight condition uh, we are not uh, on ground okay, but then your model yeah. would also change and yeah. here you are talking of an upright pendulum yeah. on a cart so then uh, we have to consider these uh, forces and uh, we, in uh, in model we are, uh, if uh, then uh, for stabilization we need a, a feedback loop from sensors and inertial measurement unit then we have to also include a uh, sensor models and feedback law in uh, our model okay thank you so we'll now have parthasarathy so let's make the problem statement as simple as possible so the title says actuating proof mass in resonating mems gyroscope sensor in custom made parts so first what are we doing in simply in simple statement we are just actuating a mass so why are we doing it so in let's see uh, the different types of actuation gives rise to different characteristics in the sensor so how are we achieving it that's where this lyapunov uh, lee slotin control comes into picture so this is a simple control I'll explain it how it achieves it so first let's have a brief overview of what is the sensor so 
uh, that is a, the middle part is a proof mass it is just a mass which actually senses the forces so this sensor this whole thing is in a rotating frame and whenever we are in a rotating frame there is a coriolis force so that is what we'll exploit to sense the rotation so this coriolis force is minus 2m omega cross v so so this is propor this proportional to omega and v and the cross product so this coriolis force acts on the proof mass and this proof mass is attached to a vibrating beam on both sides so that is attached to a through a suspension mechanism so this coriolis force acting on the mass directly acts on those vibrating beams so which are the vibrating beams so these uh, double a, double ended tuning forks so these are the beams and they are vibrating so those beams are vibrating so whatever the coriolis force is acting on the mass it is transferred to the beam so that is what we are going to exploit Yeah, so that is aligned with that direction. So this is a single axis gyroscope. Whenever we are going to multiple axis, the geometry will be somewhat complicated. So uh, yeah, the, uh, there is centripetal forces also, but you will in, we can include that in the equation. So that depends on our frame rate. Right? So for we'll uh, we'll 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 not go into too much depth of what is exactly happening. We'll just see why there is why there is a need for actuation. So, the Coriolis force, as we have seen, depends on the velocity of the mass, velocity of the mass and the rotation it is experiencing. So, the force experienced by the mass depends on the velocity of the mass. So, we need to control how the mass moves in the sensor. So, and the, the force is transferred to the beam, right? The beam is vibrating and we are measuring the vibrating frequency of the beam. So, whenever there is a load acting on the beam, the vibrating, the frequency of the beam changes. So, that is a property, uh, we, can, we can show it through the elasticity equations and all and we can show that the change in frequency is directly proportional to the force acting on the beam, whenever the uh, force is very small. So, this is the uh, equation we are going to exploit. So, So this is where the crux of the problem is. So what is what we are currently doing is in all circuits we will just sinusoidally actuate the proof mass that is the easiest thing to do. But the problem is if we give a sinusoidal actuation suppose let us say there is a constant rotation. Now the force experienced by the mass is constant into sinusoidal velocity. Now to decompose that we need to again post process the data. So, by giving a sinusoidal actuation, we are actually increasing the complexity. So, if we have, suppose if we have a constant velocity for the body, then if there is a constant rotation, directly the change in frequency is our rotation input. So, the problem statement boils down to this. Previously, the body is actuated sinusoidally. Now, we need to actuate it with a triangular waves. So, we need to actuate it in a straight line. But is there a scaling of magnitudes here or was that also 10 to the power minus 3? Yeah, I just gave it for a shape comparison. Oh, just a shape comparison. So, all this is in a MEMS sensor, right? So, it is in mm, mm, 10 power minus 3 micrometers. So, that holds for the top plot. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. So, the problem statement boils down to this. We need to, we need to do trajectory tracking of the proof mass. So, how do we actuate the proof mass in a triangular wave? That is the problem statement. So, there is a Lee Slotin uh, nonlinear control. This is a very general control used in uh, robotic manipulator control. So, that is actually complicated in multi dimensions, but when we consider single dimension, it is very simple. It is very simple. So, the forces acting on the mass is actuated through a capacitor plate, and that can be reduced to a second degree system because we can consider it as a spring and mass, spring and damper system. So, the capacitor force is the control force. F control and this is the dynamics equation of the proof mass. So, now we need to somehow manipulate this control force to achieve our triangular actuation. So, how do we do, how do we do that? So, this there are two states uh, position and velocity and now the this control depends on the error. We have a desired path, our triangular path is a desired path and there is some actual path which the mass is actually undergoing. Now, we need to somehow bring the mass into our desired path. So, we define an error. 
x minus x desired. And now uh, we define a control, our control expression is this. So, so, so uh, this is a, uh, we are defining, the, so our control should depend on the error, position error and also the velocity error. It is similar to a PID but not exactly because if we apply a PID, there are uh, frequency changes in the motion. So, we are not, we are not, we don't prefer a PID. Uh, so, this is our contr control expression and now we will show that, uh, so now we will show that the, uh, okay, so this is, this looks so, so this is our, this is our initial dynamics equation and this is the control, control part. So, if we simplify that, uh, we can finally reduce the whole system to this. So, where r is equal to uh, error e dot plus lambda e. So, it is like we are doing a trajectory control and we are uh, de designing the control such that the body finally approaches our designed path. So, we show that the dynamics equation can be reduced to exponentially stable dynamics like this. So, we can see that if kd minus c is positive, uh, the error tends to 0. So, it shows that the path of the body approaches the desired path. So, we can simply show, if, the, if there are multiple dimensions, we can take uh, the Lyapunov function as uh, r transpose mr by 2 and plus that and simplify that and show that it is exponentially stable. For single, for a single dimension, it is mr square by 2. So, what did we achieve finally by doing this? So, so basically, my, my goal is this, what is this is? Least load in control is a type of control, it is a general control. We can take more, many nonlinear systems can be trajectory controlled through this least load in control, you can check it on Google. So, these were the simulation results, I did it in Simulink and or how many of you would like to see a few more presentations in the next lecture or should we stop at this? Because I do not want to discourage people who put up their hands. So, there are how many hands? 1, 2, 3, 4 and which were the topics? Fireflies and cooperative game theory. Huh? Gyroscopes. Okay, three body problem. Excellent. I mean, very nice problems. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I think we should. Yes. Oh, superb. We got so many topics. I don't think we should discourage people, and I think we should have another. Maybe it won't take as much because two, four. So today we've had nearly ten, I think. So it'll be two, four, five, six, right? Five, six. Or so, so I think we should. So uh, I don't want to discourage any anybody else to feels that oh, I want to speak on something. I I have a different perspective. Please let me know through Moodle. I'll be happy to do that. Uh, I mean, so uh, one. I will give you some feedback. So, I appreciate the enthusiasm that many of you have put into the slides have given us a lot of material. But one thing about making slides is the following that in slides you put in a few points and then you speak more. I mean the intention of a slide is not that your entire master's thesis or PhD thesis is just transported there and you want the person to be reading every line. So, you make four or five points and you explain on the points. If there is an important equation, you just put the equation, you explain the equation. So, then you keep your audience captive. So, cluttering a slide is not the best way of presenting the slide. I mean and also in a presentation, sense the audience. You should try to take 90 percent of the audience with you. You should not lose out people. I mean if I say something which is so fancy like <coughs> that half of you do not understand, I am doing it just for my satisfaction and my ego that oh, I am great, I know all these things. But I do not take any of you along. So, you should always make a presentation keeping in mind the audience to whom you make it, okay. So, that was nice. So, we will continue next time. I hope you also enjoyed it as I did, yeah. Thank you.